everybody, it's Mark Puncher here from Employer Branding Australia. Today we're going to talk about how to build an employer branding business case. It is amazing how often uh, I meet somebody who wants to do some employer branding but she or he says, I don't have it in the budget, it's going to have to wait. Um, part of the uh, problem here is that again, you know, I talk about this all the time, people only think about recruitment, organisations only think about recruitment when they have to recruit. And um, this is your opportunity to get proactive and strategic about talent, not just recruitment, but actually how you're going to engage your people, how you're going to keep them performing. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about why I think you need a business case for employer branding. Uh, briefly, I, I want to talk to you about what uh, to ask for and where to focus. Uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, what, what are the things I should be doing as a minimum? And um, for most of this, I'm going to talk to you about five key steps that you can take um, to make that business case. How you can essentially give yourself the best chance of getting it signed off. So why do you probably need a business case for EB? Well, um, first of all, because uh, you probably get it. You probably understand the need to get proactive and strategic about talent. Um, but unfortunately, still across Australia, I'm finding that um, CEOs and C-suite aren't there yet. Um, so you have to show them in advance proactively what talent is about uh, in this day and age and how important it is not just to be reactive and to sort of chuck a job out and see if you need someone. I've said this a million times, if you want to consistently attract the best people and keep them engaged, you can't just chuck up a job out and then you know, have a ping pong table and booze on a Friday. It's not going to work for you consistently. Um, the business case obviously allows you to get in the budget cycle and get, in, get, get money there and get, get budget set aside. It also um, gives you much more of a platform to show the C-suite that you are uh, on it, that you are planning in advance, you're not just reacting, you're not just doing admin. It may be that you already have that reputation within the organisation, in which case, fantastic. In that case, it will help you build on that and get the results you need. Um, so what to ask for? Well, well, the three things that matter most in employer branding, as far as we're concerned, are proposition, which is articulating why you're a great choice for the right people and what they should expect from you and what you expect from them. And remember, not just doing that for recruitment for future people, but actually for your current people to keep them connected. The second thing is strategy, an actionable strategy that says, what are we going to do to ensure that we're front of mind among our target audiences from a talent point of view? as a great place to work, you know, for the right people with the right motivations. Um, and who's going to do what, when, and how we're going to measure it. So building that strategy and working with an external partner to do that will, will just help you, you know, hugely in, in impacting on talent. The third thing, and everybody who knows me knows I talk about this all the time, storytelling. Content creation, stories about your people, whether it's video stories, whether it's written stories, whether it's something else that really bring to life what it's like to work for you, because that's how you're gonna cut through the noise in market, attract the best people, and that's also a great opportunity to drive pride and connection with your current people. So they're the three things you wanna focus on. Um, in terms of sort of how much it costs, to be completely frank, it depends on who your organization is, what you're trying to achieve. So give us a call or an email anytime you like. Um, no commitment, no hard sell, uh, we'll be happy to sort of ask you some questions and then advise on what you should be putting into that budget. Um, let's focus then on the five steps. Yes. Number one, yes. work out what you need and what will work. It's amazing how many people still think, oh, I need to put some employer branding stuff in there and they just chuck it in and hope for the best. Nobody's going to sign that stuff off, okay, if you don't really know what you want. And, and, and actually, worst case scenario is they sign it off and then you've got to figure out what you're going to do with that money. Um, you shouldn't be making these decisions later on, you should be making them in advance. Um, golden rule about understanding what you need to put in there and what will work is find your partner and get them to do the work for you. If they can't or won't, if they're not willing to actually help you and do that in advance without the guarantee of work, they're probably not the right partner. Okay, I'm going to put my hand up and say we're very, very open to doing that. It's part of the process for us. Um, in terms of you know, what you need and what will work, let's really break that down across proposition, strategy, storytelling. What do you need? What capacity and capability do you have internally? Where is it best to get external expertise and objectivity? And how are you going to fit those two things together? Um, one of the things that I always say to people is, is two areas where you absolutely should get support. One, the research and engagement and then the crafting of your EVP. Do not try and do this internally. Do not use a generic brand agency and do not try and use just a generic recruitment partner employer branding specialists are there for a reason. Um, the second thing is developing that strategy. It really helps to have an objective expert uh, or a team of objective experts supporting you and empowering you as, as you build that strategy. 
Um, the second thing, stand out your manager and prepare the ground. Look, you need an advocate. You know, you're the next person in the chain above you needs to really believe in this stuff. There's two things that are very important in this. One is when you get that person on board, there's two of you fighting the fight, there's two of you laying the ground. And, and remember that actually this doesn't start just when you submit the business case. You know, we were saying commercial, if, if you go for a tender and they've never heard of you before you put a tender in, you're never gonna win it. Same thing, if the first time the CEO and the, and the board or the C-suite or the executive um, finds out what you wanna do is through the business case being considered, unlike to happen. So you've gotta lay the ground and start this person advocating for you and for this idea um, in their conversations. The second thing that's really important here is use that person to identify and bring out early objections. So that way you can resolve them and answer them before they even come to the people who are gonna make the decision. So get that person to be honest with you when they read the business case or when they, when they understand what you're trying to do and get them to, to, to tell you what instinctively they're uh, hesitant about, any reservations they have, anything they don't quite understand because then you can use that to refine your pitch in your business case. Um, the thirdly, then prepare the case, you know, if you haven't already before you've spoken to the manager. Um, very, very, very strongly urge you to push for a presentation to the executive. You know, it is very hard um, for people to make a decision about these things based on some words on a piece of paper. People need to see your passion and energy and expertise and, and investment in doing this. Um, we strongly encourage our potential clients to involve us in that. We'll happily come and present to your executive with you with no uh, guarantee or no ex expectation on our side. Why? Because people buy people. But you are not the expert in employer branding, that's why you're using a partner. Let us help you make that case. In terms of the case, though, I know this is what a lot of people want to know, what should you include in that case? Ideally, again, as a pitch and as a presentation, but also in a written document. First of all, a summary, keep it simple. These are top line people with not a lot of time and they want the bigger picture. What is it, what are you asking to do? Why are you asking to do it? How much is it gonna cost? Secondly, lay out very simply and, and to the point, lay out our talent challenge and opportunity. What's going on right now? What's the problem and what's the opportunity that we have? Thirdly, our proposed solution. What is the process? What are the deliverables? How long is it gonna take and how much does it cost? Fourth, Look at ROI and benefits expected. Let's think about ROI for a moment. I want to be absolutely clear, employer branding is not a warm and fluffy, and it's not a nice to have, none of it's done properly. Great employer branding should drive a higher number of quality applicants. They should convert more effectively and efficiently into hires. You should get people more uh, quickly and should get people more cost effectively. Spending less on recruitment, you know, it's, it's amazing how much people are wasting on recruitment where they don't need to. Um, importantly, when you look at your own people, it will also ensure that people come in with the right expectations and stay longer and perform for longer. Employer branding, I would say 25% attracting the right people, 25% retaining them, 50% keeping them engaged and connected with what you're doing. Finally, once you've looked at that ROI, um, oh, excuse me, not finally, uh, yes, fifth in there, look at the risks. Identify the risks, show what the risks are, but not just the risks of doing this work, which would be very minimal, um, other than the spend and the investment you're making. It's the risk of not doing the work. What is the cost of making the wrong hire, of bringing the wrong person to this organisation who at best leaves quickly and at worst stays and whinges for the next five years and ruins your culture? What is the risk of not being able to attract the right people to these roles in the first place? It's a real problem. Okay, fourth, present the case, ideally with your partner. Get out there, as I've said, if you can get in there and actually have a structured to the point presentation that focuses on the benefits of, of doing this work. And finally, once that case is in there, once you've done your pitch, follow up, be brave, be persistent, be smart. If you truly own this, if you really want to get it done, it will come through and that energy and that investment is infectious. Get yourself to the point where they can't say no to you. Get yourself to the point where it's just so important to you that essentially they're buying you and your vision, not just a piece of paper that you submitted by your manager. Look, there's a free guide on our site to this, how to build an employer branding business case. Um, it's in the insights section of our site. Um, if you have any trouble finding it, if you want to talk to us, give me a call. Cheers.